I've never been short-winded, and I don't usually write speeches. <laughs> but I've got one now. Uh, I hate following. I hate following Coach Harvey too. I hate talking to him. It gets you guys all cheery, and I'll probably put you to sleep, but that's okay. Uh, as I look around the room, I'm, I'm looking at that table behind Emily's table and going, God, I'm so proud of you guys. You're all all Americans or national champs. But boy, were you a problem. <laughs> when I took this thing, this thing to start this women's program uh, to Mr. Abbott, I didn't realize that I would be coaching 19 to 23-year-old women 30 at a time in a confined space. Oh, it was enlightening. <laughs> anyway, on to talk about Emily. Emily, we didn't recruit Emily. I didn't recruit her. I needed a 101 pounder really bad because my 101 pounder, who was a national champ, was leaving. She's graduating. She, I think she's your coach now here. And she was a handful too. But I didn't recruit her because every time I saw her, she was with the Missouri Valley coach. The Missouri Valley coach told everybody in the nation she was going to Missouri Valley. She was going to Missouri Valley. That's where she's going. No need to recruit her. And I was sitting down with my assistant coach and I said, hey, uh, we got to go on over. Get this into the website. Go for it. So I did. We invited her down on a visit. And our team, our wrestling, our club, she could, she wrestled, I think this was not included in her bio, was that she wrestled internationally. I don't know how many countries, how many world teams she's been on. But she did that. I think that all sold her. And then her mom just told me the only reason she came here because she went to the restroom and she liked girls. What? After that, after the deal that I did to recruit her, that was unbelievable. Now, every coach coaches for the same reason. We coach to try to give our athletes the best chance they have for success. That's what we do. And along the way, we have problems with the academic, we have problems with their outside life, we have problems with everything. But once in your career, you get to coach somebody who is academically sound, who works hard all the time, who is coachable, who is coachable, that's a big thing. Emily Webster was that for me. She was an outstanding athlete, an outstanding academically. She did everything she's supposed to do. You had to beat her up and kick her out of the wrestling room. She was unbelievable. Those are the athletes that you get to coach once in your lifetime. And I want to, you know, I want to thank her for letting me have the opportunity to go with her ride. And as what said, we ride along. When we get an athlete like that, we just ride along. And we try to give her every chance we have to make her the best she can. Emily Webster was a, from 211 to, to, to 215, is a four-time national champion, undefeated national champion. Uh, she won her national titles in the WCWA with the combination of Division II, Division III. Every single program wrestled at the WCWA. She was undefeated. She was the third four-time All-American, I mean four-time national champion, I think, right, Rich? The third, third one? She's the third one? I have to get off. I don't do, do third one? Okay. I don't do real good with statistics. I never kept track of anything. If someone doesn't tell me, I don't know. But the most important thing, though, she's the only undefeated one. I mean, there's girls like that are Olympic gold medals, etc., like that, that unfortunately they have losses to OCU girls. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, we'd be a bunch of people out stuff like that. Uh, her senior year, she was 31 and 0 with five falls. I'm going, uh, so I'm looking at five, she only had five falls? So then I look back at the records that Rich sent me. Lucky for Rich, he sends me everything I need to know. She had 20 tenth falls. A tenth fall in the wrestling, because it's freestyle, is 10 points. That means she beat 20 other opponents by 10 points, and most of the time, I can't even remember her going into the second period. That's how good she was. Her senior year is really important. Her senior year gives her a chance to be a four-time national champion, an undefeated four-time national champion, and she has a shot at the, the OW, the Outstanding Wrestler. Uh, we go to the national duels. She gets hurt in the final match against King. Uh, they do assessment on She blew her ACL out. We're like two or three weeks out from the national tournament. She blew her ACL out. Uh, in most sports, if you tear your ACL, you're done. 
But in wrestling, we can brace you up, and you need about four to six weeks to rest, and we can put you back on the mat and you can go until your surgery. We didn't have that time. So I talked to her mom and dad and told her what the situation was, what they wanted to do. And we already made up her mind. She's going to the national tournament. That's it. I'm wrestling national tournament. So she's going to wrestle the national tournament with a torn ACL and a brace. Uh, I got the team together because women's wrestling is kind of a gossipy sport. <laughs> so I, we didn't want anybody to know what the extent of her injury was. Because if they did, they would attack her knee. That's just the way the sport is. So we kept it quiet. Emily got to the doctor. Emily got her brace. The first day she had her brace, she's in the, she's in the wrestling room. Said, what are you doing? Um, I gotta work out. I gotta work out. No, you don't. You just, I gotta work out. Put the brace on, okay, I'll let you drill. And then I catch her live wrestling already. Can't do that. I gotta work out. I gotta work out. I had to run her out of there and keep her calm down. She went to the national tournament, and she basically destroyed everybody at the national tournament. Got her fourth win for her fourth title, and got the OW at the same time, which is hard for OCU girls at that particular time in our program to get the OW. We won the national tournament, we won the national duels, but we won this and we won that, so no one wants to give you the OW. So she got that too, which an amazing young lady, amazing young lady. Her total record was 118 and 0. She had a 3.95 GPA in environmental science. I don't know what environmental studies is. I just know she was a chemistry major. And I can remember the first time she got a A minus. She got an A minus one time. She got that A minus, and I went, oh my God, it's going to be rough in the restroom today. She's going to go crazy and beat people up. I was right. <laughs> She's the second OCU athlete to be recognized in Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated and faces in the crowd. She's the second one. Do we only have two? There's more now? Okay. See, I, see, I'm looking at risk because I, I tell you, I don't keep track of statistics very well. She's a 214-15 Jim Wade Award winner as a female student athlete of the year. She's in the, at 214-215, she's in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in Missouri. She's had hundreds of different types of international competition. She's a great kid. I, I just can't tell you how much I enjoy it. Oh yeah, there's another thing for you. I made her captain of the team. And all that did for me was have her in my office every other day whining about being the captain of the team. <laughs> and now, as I've talked to her, she's now coaching, and it's rough. And the only thing I said to her is, get some on you, girl. <laughs> Emily Webster. Welcome, Emily Webster, to the Hall of Fame. Storms up into like Iowa when it's like 40 degrees outside just to watch me wrestle. 
Um, so I appreciate you guys a lot. And I'd like to thank all the coaching staff uh, that influenced my career here at Oklahoma City University, Coach Simmons, uh, Coach Stevens, Coach, Coach Davis, and Coach Rand Stein. And I'm probably forgetting a lot of people, but everybody who, who had a, a hand in it, thank you so much. Um, but most importantly today, I'd like to thank my teammates. I would never, ever have made it without you guys and your constant love and support and accountability. And I'd like to share a story um, of one of those, a, a, a moment that really represents that to me. It was my freshman year, and we were just doing preseason conditioning. We hadn't even started wrestling yet. And we were over at 3 you running sprints. And we, we'd done some stuff before that. We lined up for our first sprint. And I wasn't super tired, but I kind of looked down my line, and I saw that there was a, one of the heavyweights and a girl that was a walk-on and another bigger girl all in my line. And I thought to myself, I got this. I don't need to really try on this sprint. I can just coast. And so I start sprinting, and I, I look up, and in front of me, Michaela Hutchison was in front. And she, she joined my line. She took somebody else, threw them out of the way, and, and started sprinting with me. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> and so I, as soon as we turned around to come back, I like tried to put them in high gear, and, and she still beat me. And I remember in that really small moment that I learned a very valuable lesson, that I couldn't compete against the people in my line. I couldn't compete just against the people I thought were my competition. I had to push myself to a different level. I had to go as hard as I could every single time. And I'm so happy that Michaela taught me that very important lesson so soon in my career because it really set the tone for the rest of my time at Oklahoma City University. And that's just one small snippet of all of the love and support that you guys have have given me and I love you guys, I go to war for you.